today. Call your friends and family, because this is it. Wow. Dr. Oz reveals the ultimate Mac Daddy of all anti-aging checklist. I love a good tip. Peel off the years. How old are you? Thank you. The latest anti-aging foods and drinks. So cool. Add up to three years doing this twice a week in the bedroom. A powerful berry, an ancient secret, the spice that makes you smarter, and... Viewers are confused. I'm confused. What vitamins should we be taking? Look younger, live longer. Hey, I like that. Dr. Oz is making it easy for us. This is the big secret for you. Next. So who here is over 50? <laughs> Woo! My kind of crowd. Hello. I recently turned 54, and I have to say, it hit me like a bulldozer. Uh, because have you noticed there's a really big difference between being over 50 and just turning 50? Yeah. There's somewhere in between there that things start to change. You realize you're not as agile as you used to be, not as strong as you used to be, and that you've got to work harder to stay in shape. Anybody else notice that? Y'all notice? Uh, what is that? That's... Well, Bob Green and I kicked off our best life challenge because this is the year to get control, lose the weight, start living our best lives. It's about our health and not what size we are. So today, Dr. Oz is here to help us get healthy and literally peel off the years with the ultimate, the Mac Daddy of anti-aging <laughs> checklists. Dr. Oz, my Mac Daddy. Uh, <laughs> we got a lot of goodies. OK. <laughs> and uh, you, you really are going to go down the list just to help us know what if you are want to stay healthy, regardless what age you are. And I advise start earlier. Don't wait until you start falling apart. And then thinking drinking green tea is going to pull you back together, <laughs> you know? Let's start with what should be in your refrigerator, all right? What should be in your refrigerator? I'm telling everybody right now, get out your pencils and paper. It's a lot of information. Right. OK, here we go. Antioxidants. Antioxidants. What is an antioxidant? What does that mean? Thank you. OK. <laughs> <laughs> so these two apples were cut. This apple was cut in half. And you'll notice this has turned brown. And yes. this one hasn't, because we took a little bit of lemon juice and sprinkled it on top. Yeah. Why is that? Why? Oxidation happens when oxygen touches your tissues or an apple or touches iron and rusts it. It's the same basic process. So the lemon was like the antioxidant to the apple? Exactly. That's why this apple has stayed nice and fresh looking, although oh. this one has browned and doesn't look so hot. Same thing happens to our skin, to our heart, to our eyes. All of our bodies need to have the antioxidants. We need lots of lemon. Well, lemons get quercetin, which is not okay. bad, by the way. Okay. Onions have similar properties. But there are a lot of other really potent antioxidants that you can get. One of the best ones are blueberries. Yeah. Which we call brain berries. One of my favorites. I mix them with yogurt in the morning. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? And blueberries. And I use them for snacks. I really, really. I'm looking at this table. I eat well, because <laughs> all this is in. No, I'm getting hungry, all... too. OK, it's... no, this now, is all in my refrigerator, now, blueberries. These blueberries have a dark color mm -hmm. for a reason. All foods with dark colors in them have some of these really protecting antioxidant chemicals in them. Blueberries leads to charge, but you know, sweet potatoes, broccoli. Broccoli is a cruciferous vegetable, which means, in addition to the routine antioxidant benefits, there are specific chemicals in broccoli that actually help protect your body against cancer. It helps your thyroid, too. That's what it does hurt. I did, exactly right. It helps the thyroid as well. Mm -hmm. uh, and of course, tomatoes, uh, which are colorful, too. But tomatoes, when you actually can heat them up a little bit and put a little oil in them, right. it makes it easier to absorb the lycopene. Lycopene is another antioxidant, but it has additional benefits as well, which are particularly valuable for the heart. OK. Now, one thing I have not talked about in the show is this. This is called acai. Take a sip. Let me see what you think. OK. No telling on you. That's right. I've tricked her before. That's not bad. Not bad. Mm -hmm. So acai uh, is a little fruit that comes from the rainforest, particularly in Brazil, but throughout South America. Mm -hmm. And it's a very, very powerful antioxidant. It has twice the antioxidant content as a blueberry. So it's a wonderful alternative to a lot of the, the carbonated beverages that folks always try. That Where are we getting down. it, and how many calories? Uh, not a ton of calories. It's available at all major stores now. It's just sort of breaking through. And so I looked around, actually, and could find it in a lot of places. Okay, so I so saw A-C-A-I. A -C -A OK. Right. Now, tea. I, I'm not a big fan of coffee and dark teas, although I do think there's a, a, a benefit to them, to, to many Americans. The number one source of antioxidants in our society is, is coffee. So it's OK to get it. But the reason I like green tea is because with one third to one quarter of the caffeine, you get the same punch. Because there are chemicals, polyphenols, that exist together with uh, the, the green tea, the caffeine. And these catechins are important for stimulating your brain. Now, 
There's a new tea that a lot of you have not heard of. It's not new, it's, it's very old. Yeah. Uh, and, and these have been used for centuries for healing purposes. They help with headaches and, and valuable many other arenas. But white tea, which is similar to green tea, and it comes from the same plant, but it's an immature bud. So it hasn't matured yet. You take tea and you dry it out. The more you let it dry, the darker the tea becomes. Right. So green tea is very young, teas that haven't been dried much. Dark teas have been dried a lot, oolongs in the middle. And what, white tea hasn't been dried as much as the green. At all, it hasn't been dried at all. It's okay. immature, it has a little silvery fuzz on it. Uh, you actually steam it, you don't dry it at all. So it preserves all those important catechins, which is why we have a lot of hopes that there'll be medicinal benefits to this that go far beyond wow. uh, just the caffeine that will keep you alert and keep you jazzed up. So it is caffeinated. There, there's a small amount of caffeine in it. Because I don't do caffeinated stuff. Yeah, I don't like it either, and you have to go to the bathroom. <laughs> Plus, going to the bathroom in the OR is very uncomfortable. Never good. <laughs> Never good. OK, red wine, my fave. Yeah, I like red wine, too. I'll toast you. This is a very good. Is this uh, Cabernet? Cabernet. Or? OK, good. Mm. I wish you had some. Mm. So here's why, first of all, there's alcohol, obviously, in red wine, uh, which has an independent benefit. But what especially gives red wine some of its real gusto is it's got some. <laughs> Go ahead. It has resveratrol in it, which is a, a very strong antioxidant as well. And resveratrol does one other thing. It turns on a system in your body that prevents your cells from aging. You can get it from concrete juice, by the way. Why is red so much better than uh, red's better than white? Because the white wines don't have the grape skin on them. Oh. That's why Concord grape juice, for example, yeah. and other types of dark grape juices will also have the resveratrol. They don't have the alcohol. And 80% of the benefit of the wine is actually the alcohol and 20% is the resveratrol. So it's a combination that makes red wine so valuable. We're all going, yeah. <laughs> That's good. That's good. But this is, it, like everything, it's in proportion, right? Of course. We're talking about one. In, in, my, in moderation. That's the word, yeah. Uh, we're talking about one glass a day for, for most people. A tiny bit more if you're a male. M males can metabolize the alcohol One glass is good. Yeah, I think so, too. Yeah, one good glass. <laughs> <laughs> Dr. Michael uh, Roizen much. is back. He's the co-author of Dr. Oz's You Books, and he's also the brains behind the Real Age Test. It's a short test that you take online, and it helps you understand how the lifestyle choices that you make affect how long you may be able to live. Our entire studio audience took the test. Where's Barbara Blunquist? Where are you, Barbara? I am. Hello. <laughs> All right. How old are you? I'm 60. Pretty good. Pretty good. Now, isn't that just good genes? Yeah. Well, yeah, my mom's from Kosciuszko, so good genes. Fantastic. <laughs> Fantastic. OK, so what are the results of her test, Dr. Rosen? Well, she's really not 60. She's closer to 48. Oh. <laughs> really bad. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone. 12 years younger than your real age? I'd take it if I were you. OK, I'll take it. I'll take, take that. It. That's yeah. fantastic. She, she does yoga, and you've done it for a long while, even right. before it be, I think 22 years, even mm -hmm. before it became popular. She does a cardio exercise called belly dancing. Oh, yes. Right. I love my belly dancing class. <laughs> um, and you do a number of other things. One of the things, she has a passion in life, which is reading and writing regularly. And that keeps her mind young. And really, it's that passion in life that's important. Wow. Yeah, you may be the best 60-year-old I've ever seen. I've never <laughs> seen anybody like, wow. Yeah, I, and I don't know. OK. Fantastic. OK, Sandra, Sandra Zinzon. Zinzon, where are you? And you are how old? 63. 63. Wow. <laughs> And so, uh, Dr. Rosen, what's her real age? Well, her real age is barely 50. Okay. She's 13 <laughs> years younger. And she does that because you've meditated for a long while. Um, you do a number of other things good. You sleep well. Right. You eat a balanced diet. Mm -hmm. And she also has a passion in life. You ride horses, I understand, regularly. Yeah. Yes. It's interesting you're mentioning passion in life. How much a role does passion in life have to play in your aging? It's really huge. It's about eight-year effect. So it really has, I mean, it keeps us young. It's, it's a major factor. Wow. Well, Laura wrote in telling us that she's out of control and needs some tough love to get into gear. Hi. <laughs> Laura, like, I don't know if I want to stand <laughs> up right here. Yeah, don't show. I 
Well, after those two, Laura goes, I think I want to just hide. Yeah. I'm still coming out. How old are you? 44. 44. Hmm. 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 What's your real age, Dr. Royce? Um, she's almost 60. Temporarily. You can get younger. That's the good news. Um, she um, has you know, a number of... No, makes you want to cry, doesn't it? I know. It's okay. It's a moment. Just take a moment. No, I, I wouldn't be here if I didn't already know that. Okay. Yeah. And Go ahead. Give it to me. And, you... <laughs> and pass the blueberries. Yeah. <laughs> Actually, I will. She Go smokes. No. Um, she smokes. She um, doesn't exercise. Yeah. Um, and uh, one other thing, the main thing, is she has a lot of stress both at work and at home, and she doesn't deal with it very well. Didn't we say on the last show on smoking that it takes 10 years off of your life? Right. It ages you. Smoking before. makes you 10 years older. Yeah. Um, and she's done it for, what, 30 years? Yes. Since I was a teenager. Mm. Yeah. OK, but you can turn it around. That's the good news for everybody who's watching right now. And actually, the things we've shown here, j just in, in the right amounts, can take a dramatic uh, 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 amount of aging off. Pass her the Pass her the blueberries. <laughs> pass her the blueberries, Dr. Rosen. Pass the blueberries. <laughs> so, so, <laughs> don't share with them. So just give you, to give you the amounts, you want five servings, five fistfuls of these antioxidant vegetables and fruits. You can get up to about four cups uh, of these teas that are beneficial for you, a glass of wine a day. And right in front of us here, we have about half a decade that can strip off your life. Yes. And it's about time. changing the way you look at your life, not about going on a diet for a small amount of time, losing the weight or whatever. It's about changing the way you live. Correct? Living your best life. Living. Hey, I like that. Oh. It's simple, people. If you follow Dr. Oz's ultimate anti-aging and Dr. Roizen's ultimate anti-aging checklist, you'll feel better, you'll look better, you'll be healthier, and could actually help you live longer. We'll have more when we come back. Good news. <laughs> Next, a spice that could make you smarter? And the ancient secret Dr. Oz discovered on his recent trip to the Amazon rainforest. It could add years to your life, he says. Did you know that your spice rack is full of anti-aging secrets? Research shows that cinnamon can decrease blood sugar levels and lower cholesterol, especially in people with type 2 diabetes. Ginger can decrease blood pressure, alleviate arthritis pain, and reduce your risk of cancer. Arthritis sufferers may also find relief in turmeric. This spice, found in curry, has also been reported to help prevent Alzheimer's disease. And finally, paprika and cayenne pepper are both super spices. They can help fight high blood pressure and improve circulation. All right, let me move my wine here. Now, first of all, I want you to take a look. Thank you. <laughs> take a little smell of that. Mm. Mm, rosemary, right? Rosemary, besides tasting really great and oh, waking you up, is very important for learning. It makes you smarter because it helps you focus. It's one of those very simple, easy it to does? use tools. It absolutely does. In fact, in laboratory rats, they actually did this experiment. They showed the rats learn faster if they were exposed to rosemary scents, and they reproduced the data in humans. To the scents or just or eating it? Well, both. You got to eat it. But, but the scent actually starts the process. I mean, I love the smell of this. Doesn't it? I just love it. <sighs> I use it all the time. I didn't feel any smarter, but OK. <laughs> That's great. That's great. Now, you know what I was this asking is. you during the commercial break, if you have a lot of people obviously have spice racks. Everybody here has one, right? Do the spices have the same effect for you if they're already dried and jarred as they do if they're picked fresh? They have most of the effect. And okay. for many Americans, it's a lot easier to keep them in a dried form. OK. We're going to talk about fiber now. Oh, now, boy, I love The big this. problem with fiber, obviously, is it does make you get a little bit bloated. We're going to yeah. talk about that. But, but. It's really important. Is this steel cut oatmeal? Steel cut oatmeal. Oh, my favorite. Uh, I love this too. And it takes a little longer to make it. Basically, the longer it takes the oatmeal, the more the fiber is going to be able to benefit you. So yeah. be patient with it. It doesn't take that long. Are you all steel cutters? I yeah, it's fantastic. And doesn't it taste with apple juice? It's good in the, in the small crock pot. I, That's what my mom With taught. apple juice. You cook yes. it in the apple juice? Hot water. Mm -hmm. You wow. use apple juice. I'm going to try that. Great. I'm going to try oh, that. Great. Mm -hmm. It's great. Thank you. you <laughs> right. Brown rice, much better than white rice. In fact, the white foods in general, you want to stay away from white bread, white pasta, white rice, white sugar. These foods are not in your best interest. This is Jerusalem artichoke pasta. This is what Lisa makes at our house. 
And, and, and it's very high in fiber, probably two and a half grams of fiber in, in this bowl Jerusalem of artichoke. Jerusalem artichoke. This is what it looks like when it's uncooked. It's pretty attractive. And it yeah. tastes, to me anyway, just about the same as regular pasta. It's a good solution for a lot of folks. Okay. Whole grain breads. Let me just dispel okay. one big myth. Okay. And, and you know, this is something that we've talked about before. I'm going to hammer it home. It's got to say 100% whole grain. So whole grain. wheat is not good enough. Whole wheat could mean it's got 7% or 13% whole grain. It's got to say 100% whole, whole grain. grain. That keeps all the nutrients in the intestinal system and releases it into your body as you need it. Of course, another great source of fiber uh, are the beans, okay. which have a lot of protein in them as well. And these, uh, these beans come in many different forms, and, and they, they can be mixed in any food. So especially for vegetarians, it becomes a platform for the protein you need in your diet. OK. Heather wrote in with a question about fiber. Hi, Dr. Oz. Um, I've seen you talk about the health benefits of fiber. And being that I am a white bread kind of girl, I thought that I should try to get some fiber in my diet. So I bought the steel cut oats, the whole grain breads, and tried incorporating them in. But it's had sort of disastrous um, consequences for my digestive system. <laughs> to the point that um, shortly after starting to eat more fiber, I went for a run on a trail near my house and was literally five miles from any kind of bathroom when, let's just say, that the, the fiber hit. The, the urge came. And I was running for the woods. So is there a different kind of fiber I can eat that will be a little bit easier for my body? Interesting. Well, uh, many people have a problem if they add a lot of fiber all at once. So let me just, before you give up on fiber in general, and especially grains in, in particular. That's when her bowels went, whoa! Whoa, down more, down, whoa! Yeah, whoa. Uh, yeah, you can't go from the average in America of you know, 10 to 12 grams of fiber to the 25 grams that a woman needs or the 35 that a male needs like that. Oh. It's just too much all at once. And the bacteria in your intestines, remember, there are more bacteria in your intestines than are, there are cells in your body. So there are a lot of guys in there, and they're just trying to metabolize the food. So if you give them a lot of fiber all at once, they're going to make a lot of gas out of it. Psyllium husks work pretty well. Yeah. If you add them gently over time, uh, they're, they're nice to use because you can put them on almost any food and slowly build up your foundation. If you're having a lot of foods like beans, you can add just a little bit of a, 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 a teaspoonful of something called Beano. There are other products like it. Uh, but they provide enzymes, natural enzymes, that help your body get rid uh, of some of the gaseous elements. But let me share something with you that I found. I went down to South America. OK. I was uh, in Peru. And they eat a lot of whole grains. And so when I was looking around at some of the cool things they have down there, I wondered upon this. Uh, this is called chia. How many of you have heard of chia? How about chia pets? <laughs> All right. Well, this is how they make chia pets. I don't want you eating chia pets. But, but these are little whole grain seeds. They're, they're just as nutritious, in fact, as, as, as any other whole grain. Plus, they got a little extra pounce to them because they, they are full, full of fiber. And these are some chia cupcakes. Really? Like this one. OK. One thing about chia, it's got a lot of magnesium in it. Remember that broccoli I had before? This much chia ha has more magnesium than, than about 10 of those heads of, of broccoli. And it's got as much calcium in it as a couple cups of milk. So there's a lot of nutrients this in this. Nice. Wow. So it's a completely balanced whole grain uh, product that you can actually take with you and use in almost any food you want. Okay. Th that's why we use cupcakes today, but you can put it in anything so else you want. So it adds more fiber. It adds more fiber. It adds one other thing, too, by the way. What? It's very rich in the next big category, okay, which, which are omega-3 fatty acids. Which is why I take flaxseed. Exactly. But okay. you take the flaxseed, which is this, right. by either roasting it a little bit or hopefully by grinding it up. Right? I just buy it. But well, you, you eat it like this? Yeah, they look like this, only mine are a little more golden. Yeah, but, but you don't get the oil from it unless you chew it up. Yeah, I mean, I put it in stuff. Yeah, but you grind it up. No, am I supposed to? Yeah, if you don't grind it, you're not, you, can't break, you cannot break down those seeds. So you've got to take the flax seed and grind it up, uh, or you've got to chew it in your teeth, which is sort of hard to do. Well, it doesn't say that on the bag. Well, it's not. <laughs> but you're not getting the omega-3 fats from it, then. So I'm supposed to be grinding this? Yes, you've got to grind this stuff up. Or else you're not getting the fats out of it. All that damn flaxseed I have? <laughs> At least you got the fiber. Now, now why, am I, why would I be grinding it to get the? If you chew it up in your mouth, which is hard to do, uh -huh. or you grind it, you get the healthy fats out of it. You want your diet to okay. be full of fats that oh are my. liquid at room temperature. Flaxseed oil has that characteristic. So do walnuts. So I'm supposed to grind this. Ground, grind this. You don't have to grind the chia, because it, it actually breaks up pretty easily when wow. you mix it with water. Walnuts have omega-3s in them. And this is the big secret for you. Mm. Fish, we all know, have omega-3s, right? Yeah. We all know that? Where did, the, where did the fish get the omega-3s from? I don't know. The fish eat the omega-3s. They get it from seaweed. Oh, OK. So the DHA, the key kind of omega-3 you want, 
It comes from things like spirulina algae. Take, okay. a, take a taste of this. This is guacamole made with spirulina. Oh, come on now. Here, hold yours. No, no, no. I'm gonna, uh, that that does not look that appetizing uh, to me, I gotta tell you. She's gonna like this. No, I like guacamole. Mark my, <laughs> mark my word, she will like this. Mm. Not bad. Oh, yeah. Pretty good. It's a, what is it's this, a, algae? Yeah, this is spirulina algae guacamole. Come on over, friends. <laughs> Come on now. Serving and, spirulina algae guacamole. And, and let me finish up with the, the last and, and a crucial part of any rounded diet, which is olive oil. Yeah, olive oil has- it's a It should be a staple in your house. Absolutely, you gotta yeah. have a tablespoon or two of this a day. Use it for your salads. Let me dispel one How myth. many of you have it in your house? You use it all the time. Oh, Very good. It. Now, you cannot Very pour good. this in a frying pan and yeah. then add the food. Because if you fry the olive oil, it's a, it's a very sensitive fat, it will go bad. So you put the food in the olive oil first and then put it in the pan. And that's a wonderful way of, of reducing the amount of oxidation that occurs to this. Olives, of course, themselves are wonderful to have. Say that again, because I've been doing it all wrong. Yeah. So a, a lot <laughs> of... I do this in the skillet all the time with a little... It, everything. If, if you take a healthy fat and you fry it, if it reaches its smoking point, then you actually are oxidizing it. And when you oxidize it, you actually damage the fats. So you lose a lot of the benefit. Doesn't mean you can't use it. By the way, salads and the like is fine. But when you're cooking food with it, use it gingerly. Ideally, mix the food in the olive oil first before you put it on the pan so you don't have a lot of fried, healthy oils that have now been damaged. Whoa, I love a good tip. <laughs> we'll be right back. We'll be right back. I never knew that. I think I Coming up, it takes just 30 minutes and could add nine years to our lives? I want some of that. It's Dr. Oz's ultimate anti-aging checklist. You and Bob Green always say, there's no way around it, you have to get moving. So that's not what we're talking about, to keep ourselves in shape. But we've, we've talked about the aging plan now for food. That's, that's about a third of the whole battle. But a quarter of the battle, the next big battle, is exercise. Absolutely. We've got a question, I think. Okay, question. Angela wrote in with a question for Dr. Oz. Dr. Oz, as I'm aging, um, every year I just seem to see the scale going up and up with those years adding on. Um, I'm exercising regularly. I'm eating a well-balanced diet. I feel like I should be at least maintaining, not adding. Now I found myself with 15, 20 pounds to lose, and it just won't budge. Do you have any... Suggestions? Lo lots of advice, but the, the, the first bit of advice is don't focus on the, on the weight, focus on the waist, right? Because when you start exercising and putting on muscle mass, you'll actually increase your weight a tiny bit. Um, but your waist size will go down, you'll look better. But the other big issue, and I think Bob has focused on this, and I think he's right, is I don't think you're probably pushing yourself hard enough. Come, come up here, let me show you something. By the way, how old are you? 45. 45. Do you know what the formula is for your ideal heart rate? No. All right, so the formula is 220, minus your age, and then multiply that by 0.8, 80%. And so the, we'll do the math up here. Your ideal heart rate when you're exercising is 140. Okay. Do you know if you get there? I break a sweat. Does right. that mean I'm there? Well, let's hop up here. I'm gonna, I think that one of the, the, the key things for us to, to recognize. I love it, this machine too. Isn't it great? But you have to work a little harder on this machine because it's, you know, oh, this is the great one that has, you can do the track or the mountains or the. Now, unfortunately, that level of exercise is not enough for you. We're going to take it up a little bit. Okay, I would be at six if I was doing this on my own. Six. So this is a little bit more than that. Is that doable? Yeah, but that's double. <laughs> <laughs> that's right. double so, where I should be. <laughs> so we're going to get your heart rate up to that 140. In the meantime, I'm going to disrobe, Ms. Winfrey, yeah. and, and we are going to do some exercises. <laughs> you got there already. Now, by the way, okay. the fact that you got there so, so quickly fast, yeah. is a little bit of concern to me. Because you shouldn't be able to get to your ideal heart rate so fast. You should be in better shape than that. So the fact that you got to 140 already, and everyone can see that right there, it means that you're not actually doing with the amount of exercise at the, at the type of intensity that you need to do day in and day out. And so I'm not working out close to how hard I should be working out. Yeah, and you know what? You don't have to do this forever. Do this for 20 minutes at that heart rate, by the way. Three now times you're at 144 week. already. And how does don't? this feel? I'm fine. <laughs> okay, good. You're fine because you can talk? Still, yeah. yeah. You want to be able to talk where it's not, it's not quite un uncomfortable. It's a little bit uncomfortable. It's not like, you know, having a cocktail party kind of talk. <laughs> right? A little bit That's of, absolutely yeah, right. yeah, breathing hard. 
Now, that, that's cardiovascular exercise. That's really good for your heart. And while you do that, I want to show a couple exercises to you that might help build the muscle mass. Just, remember, keep, just keep this going. OK, <laughs> very good. Remember, muscle mass is important. Muscle burns 50 times more calories than fat does. It's a simple exercise that everyone can do at home. Just move a little bit of the furniture out of the corner of your, your uh, living room. You'll be able to do it. The lunge is the first one. Okay. Fundamentally important because it builds your, your lower body and your thighs. You want to lunge forward, get your knee as close to the ground as you can. D don't let the right knee pass over your toe. And you can do it with weights, sort of the same basic exercise pad. OK? Simple to do. Okay. Then you want to do leg lifts. So leg lifts are pretty straight up. You, you bring them up about six inches. You can rest your head back. You can do this. You can play with it. Uh, with this, by the way, will strengthen the side muscles of the belly. You can do this. You can do all kinds of games with this, but it does strengthen your core muscles. And without the core muscles being strong, you're not going to be able to do the next thing, which is okay. what Bob Green gives me the biggest hard time about. OK. Pull-ups, right? Pull-ups. Now, by the way, this is a really cool machine, but you can get for 10, 20, 30 bucks. There are lots of different kinds uh, of products that you can actually put within a door frame. Uh, just to be cautious about this, uh, if you don't put it in right, you'll rip the door frame out. And the beauty of pull-ups is that when you're doing them, you're actually exercising your upper body, your arms, your torso. Pull-ups are hard. In the beginning, you might not be able to do it without somebody holding you up. But if you need to, you can stand on the ground and just keep going. But you can do this forever. <laughs> now, after Bob, after Bob gave me a hard time when we were in Miraval together, yeah. I started doing this. And in the beginning, I had trouble doing more than two or three of them. But with your legs helping Now, you, how many can you do? I'd probably do 20. I haven't actually done it today. I well, did a bunch see. before. Oh, All right, so 20. <laughs> that was fun. Very good. I won't be able to breathe if I do 20. OK. <laughs> Coming up, something you can do for five minutes in the bathroom that could add years to your life. We'll be back. That's pretty good. You did six there just now. Uh, I'll do 20. Six, six is hard. Six is hard. That is 21 because you did six before and then 15. Bob would never count it as 21. He wouldn't no, because he you would separated them. I, I mean, if that I stepped up so for a minute. It's so hard to do. It's so hard to do because you're pulling your whole body weight up. Yep. yep. Okay. Here's Dr. Oz's ultimate exercise checklist. First, get your heart rate up for 20 minutes at least three times a week. Next, build muscle with lunges and leg lifts. Next is in what? Well, you got strength, you got good heart rate now, so you revved your engine, but you need flexibility. We store a lot of our tension in our hips. Most Americans ought to be able to touch their fingertips to their toes. Yep. Should be straightforward to do. And I call it yoga. All right? It's a very simple way of, of doing the exact same thing. So you lean over, yep. just relax yourself, and let these hips uh, sort of release so all the energy goes away. Then go into a, a plank position like this. Yeah. And then this is called up dog. Yeah. And then this is called down dog. And down yeah, dog, again, dog. Yep. does the same kind of thing. It releases the hips. Are your heels to... supposed to be on the bottom, for, for, flat on the floor for downward facing dog? You mean for this? Yeah. Yeah, your, your, your heel should be on the floor. OK. Yeah. Then one little added thing, bring the right leg forward, mm -hmm. come up, yeah. do a sun twist, salute. sun salutation, exactly, yeah. Yeah. then into warrior with the knees bent. Yeah. And you can do the exact same thing for the other side. It's, it's, it's very soothing. And that meditation is very powerful. One other little tool. Falling is a major cause of morbidity, and so is getting hurt, obviously, from doing the other exercises. So there's something called tree pose. You know okay. what that is? Mm, no. You ever heard of it? Yeah, I have heard of it. So you bring your arms up, yeah. focus on someone like your beautiful face. OK. And as you do that, you meditate to it. Now, I have a meditation for everybody. OK. I'm going to tell you why it's important now, as you're doing it. I want everyone to say, yum. 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 Mm. That vibration stimulates your sinuses to release nitric oxide, a very important gas that relaxes your lungs and relaxes your blood vessels. It's one of the reasons we think meditation may be so effective. And a little tool for you? Yeah. Do it in your bathroom, because no one will find you. Right? <laughs> no one's going to bother you there. You can get five minutes of solace, of peace and quiet. Just saying yum? Well, you don't have to say yum. <laughs> <laughs> but Yummy. <me> <laughs> yeah, yum. Go ahead. Well, it's true. But the, but the meditation itself is so fundamental to our well-being. Prayer is meditation. 
You know, just a, a few moments to yourself, not a lot, but no one can bother you to let it all slip away. It allows you to reboot your engine uh, and get, get back on track. Okay, we'll be right back. Coming up, a problem in the bedroom that is aging us at warp speed. We'll be right back. Dr. Oz says something's going on in the bedroom that's aging us at warp speed. What is it? We're not sleeping. Oh, yeah. And, and sleeping is the fundamental way we reboot ourselves. I gotcha. Growth hormone, probably the most important hormone for maintaining our longevity, mm. or that vitality, that, that sort of youthful vigor and bounciness, is not possible really to increase without those injections that some doctors give, unless you're getting sleep. Sleep is the fundamental way we rejuvenate that whole process. And then without the sleep that we know is so nourishing, we begin to dramatically age faster. It strips years off of our real age. I now, believe it. what do you do about it? Very simple. You got some, simple, some sleep, sleep hygiene tools that I'm going to cover for you. Remember, 100 years ago, 1,000 years ago, the way humans fell asleep was the sun went down, right? And then when it got dark, it got quieter. So you sort of slipped into sleep. You didn't fall asleep. You slipped into it. We have to recreate that. So a few minutes before bedtime, take care of your to-do list. Clean yourself up. By the way, flossing, don't forget that. You know, that, that, that'll take two to five years off your real age because of gingivitis and irritation of the gums that occur if you don't floss your teeth. Do all that hygiene stuff. Then when you actually get into bed, turn the lights down, do something that's soothing. Turn off the TV, turn off the computer. Don't yeah. do things that jazz you back up again, and you will find yourself gently slipping into sleep. Okay, next on the anti-aging checklist is something else that happens in the bedroom. Sex, 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 sex. <laughs> or, or does it happen in the bedroom, or right? Or does it happen, yeah. <laughs> well, yeah. And that's also aging people, right? Ages us terribly. And there are a couple of reasons. When, when, you, when you have loving, conjugal love with someone, uh, and, and you actually have that, that passionate moment, you not only exchange bodily chemicals, which you do, but you stimulate chemicals within you. So women get oxytocin increases, which, which give you that sort of loving bond that you mm -hmm. want with the world around you, the people around you. Uh, men have an increase in testosterone. And the real age impact is dramatic. Okay. The average American has sex 58 times a year, so once a week. If you double that, you reduce your real age by almost three years. But the fact that matters, we need more of it, we're not getting enough. So what do you do? Sleep naked, you know, put some mirrors up there, you know, <laughs> find, find, find ways of, of, of making it possible to happen, but also turn off the TV, turn off the computer, allow yourselves to focus on each other, or it's just not gonna start. Okay, when we come back, a little confused I am, and I know you are too, Bottom line on vitamins. What should we be taking? How much? How many? When? Back in a moment, vitamins. <laughs> also, I need some more of this. I'm out of this now. Oh. Vitamin D has been getting. Oh, so what's the deal with vitamins? <laughs> Viewers are confused. I'm confused. What should we be taking? I'm on vitamin D. It's gotten a lot of headlines, this vitamin D. Well, let's talk about you a little bit. It took me three different blood tests, yeah. all showing you to be profoundly low in vitamin D. Yeah, I live in you... Chicago. What do you want? <laughs> <laughs> this is the kind of patient we have here. <laughs> so let's start with vitamin D, because uh, this is actually the biggest deficiency we have right now in this country. We estimate that over half of all Americans are deficient in vitamin D. Remember, the main way of getting it is through sunlight. We actually uh, did tests on a, on a bunch of Harpo employees, and almost 60% were deficient in vitamin D. So I can pretty much guarantee if you're watching this program, you or someone close to you is deficient in vitamin D. And why do we need it? Well, vitamin D, it turns out, is critically important for preventing cancer, mm -hmm. critically important for reducing heart problems. It linked to multiple sclerosis, to juvenile diabetes. It's a, one of the best ways of reducing infection rates. It's got a ton of things that it does for you to make your immune system function the way you want it to function. And all you got to do is get about 10 minutes of direct sunlight to your body. So I tell people, put sunblock on your face and hands because you don't want those getting wrinkled. Mm -hmm. But then expose your body to sunlight. And by the way, even in the southern part of this country now, because everyone's coating up so well, people aren't getting enough sun exposure. So you need to get a little bit of sun exposure or you need to take 1,000 units of vitamin D. All right. There are many different forms of it. They're tiny, itty bitty little pills. Even you will want, you know, my nickname is pills, right? right. She hates Even, pills. Yes. Hates pills. I, I hate the big horse calcium ones, you know? Well, let's talk about calcium. Okay. The other thing you hate about calcium is. is mm, little constipated. Yep, yeah, little constipation. Yeah. So you want to take calcium, but you got to take it with magnesium. Because if you don't take them together, the magnesium loosens your, your, your poop. The calcium makes it a little bit like concrete. You you're... think you're having a baby? Yeah. <laughs> Did I not call you one day yes, and said, I yes. think I just delivered yes. a child? <laughs> That's right. That's right. It's so true. <laughs> I think I just delivered yeah. a boy, boy! 
Hey! Anyway. Before we get to the multivitamins, let me just cover the other big uh, forgotten element, which is uh, the DHA omega-3s. Now, we talked about the fact that fish oil, uh, which is a good source of, of omega-3s, is a pretty big capsule. This is two grams of fish oil, which is what we usually recommend for men to take. Women can take about half that. Uh, this is a, a similar dose as this of DHA omega-3. So it's a smaller pill. It comes from a source that we know is pretty clean. So I think DHA omega-3s make a lot of sense. Okay. Uh, this is where the big problems happen. People don't know how to pick their multivitamin. No, we don't. So let's go over that. Okay. So you're going to take, again, vitamin D with calcium, magnesium, and your DHA. That's aside. Okay. Multivitamin should be taken in divided doses. Notice we cut the pills in half. Why do you do that? If you overfill your tank, do you go further than if you filled it up enough? No. You want to give your body the right amount of fuel for when you need it. Vitamins have water-soluble elements to them, so they are quickly moved through your system. Now, a lot of people say, does the vitamins really help me? I pee them out anyway. Yes. Well, you pee out your antibiotics I also. I actually like that moment <laughs> when you look at your pee and it's all kind of greenish-yellow. Yeah. I think <laughs> at, least it, at least it went through me, and now I'm feeling all kind of vitamin-like. But, yeah. but, but, but you know, while it's in you, it plays a role, right? We pee out our antibiotics. We pee out our chemotherapies. You know, we do a lot of things to our body that we pee out. Vitamins are the same way. While they're there, they're important. If you divide the vitamin in half, then you stabilize your dose during the day. Take half in the morning, half in the evening. Of a multivitamin. Of a multivitamin. Now, one little thing about multivitamins, because people get really confused about men versus women, young yeah. versus old. Let's make it really simple. Okay. Everyone takes the basic same multivitamin with two small exceptions. Women who are menstruating are yes. losing blood. Yes. They need iron to make new blood. Okay. So premenopausal women need to be taking a vitamin supplement that has some iron in it. Okay. Men do not need iron, and nor do women who are past menopause. Okay. Right? The only other difference is the dose of vitamin A. Women who are premenopausal could become pregnant. Babies need the vitamin A. Right. But if you're a postmenopausal or a guy, you don't need a lot of vitamin A. So for men and postmenopausal women, 2,500 units of vitamin A. This is all on Oprah.com. If you're a woman, you can get up to 5,000 of vitamin A. Okay. That's the basics of, of vitamins. Okay. Aspirin, two baby aspirin a day. Why two baby aspirin a day? Because if you take one baby aspirin a day, for most people, it's just fine. But there's a percentage of the population that is resistant to aspirin. They don't respond to just one baby aspirin. And because there's not an increased amount of side effects with two baby aspirin, we usually ask you to take one extra one just to make sure you're getting a, a therapeutic dose. Why not a regular aspirin? A regular aspirin is 325 milligrams. Two babies is 162, so it's half a regular aspirin. The more aspirin you take, the more chances you might have some intestinal discomfort. Okay. And so for most people over the age of 40, we say take aspirin. We know it's very effective in reducing heart disease, very effective in reducing cancer. Uh, we think it might actually reduce wrinkles. I mean, there's a lot of things that aspirin might do that are beneficial to you, not only because it thins your blood, but it's a very powerful anti-inflammatory drug. Okay, does it matter what, which multivitamin you take, which brand? Because all of them have the same... Stuff right. Them. As long as you look, go on the Oprah.com site, look at the doses that we recommend, make sure the brand you pick fits those criteria, and you're fine. I do want to emphasize, if you ate the perfect diet all the time, we wouldn't feel com compelled to recommend vitamins to you. But Mike did this on Real Age, did a, a nationwide survey, and over 99% of people did not take the diet that would have given them this broader range of vitamins. Okay, so let's recap. You're going to get the multivitamin. You're going to split it in half. You're going to take one half in the morning, one at night. Exactly. You're going to get the calcium and the magnesium together, because if you just do calcium, you will be constipated. Yes. Okay, <laughs> you're going to get omega-3 with DH. The DHA type DH of omega-3. DHA. Okay, you must take your vitamin D, especially if you live in climates where you're not getting right. sunshine every day. And if you're not going to check your vitamin D, just go ahead and take it. A, a thousand units a day, it's not, there's no side effect at that dose at all. You need two baby aspirin. Over the age of 40. Over the age of 40. And that's it. That's it. Simple to do. Everyone can do it. All right. We'll be right back. Checklist again. First, food, five servings of antioxidants a day. Five fistfuls. Five fistfuls. Okay. Colorful fruits and vegetables. That's broccoli, green tea, fiber rich. Second, second exercise, of course, where we did that. Get your heart rate up, do strength training and stretch. And stretch, and you can do it any way you wish, but roughly it's 20 minutes of getting your heart rate up, 10 minutes of weightlifting, and five minutes of stretching. You can divide them up you know, several times a week. Meditate even if you have just five minutes. I mean, your life will change, really, yeah. exponentially if you start meditating. I know that. Sleep and sex. So, so cool. <laughs> I recommend sex, then sleep. Yes. 
Yes. Nine out of ten doctors recommend that too. Okay, and the right <laughs> vitamins. And the right vitamins. Vitamins are critical. Split the multivitamin in half. Split the vitamin, the multivitamin in half. Don't forget to get extra vitamin D, the DHA, fish oils, and the calcium, magnesium. It's simple to do. In one hand, I can list them all for you. Uh, there's no excuse for us not doing it, and it costs less than a dollar a day. Thanks again. I'll tell Bob Green about the pull-ups. That was really impressive. <laughs> was that not impressive, audience? <laughs> Hard to do. Thank you, too, Dr. Rosen. Their book is called You, Staying Young, the Owner's Manual for Extending Your Warranty. Thanks for watching. See you next time.